Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast, and it is brought to you by PropSwap, America's sports betting marketplace. Sell your sports bets, take your profit, find out how. Go to PropSwap.com, download the PropSwap app today. Adam Kaplan is here, the start of the new league year is one minute old. Adam Kaplan, how are you, sir? Mike, yeah, it actually, as you know, it started on, on Monday. I, I, I warned our, our listeners that don't expect fireworks on Wednesday. It's all going to start on Monday, and it, it certainly did. Uh, several key players going off the board, and um, it's just the way it is. When they change the rules, uh, this is what happens. And, and a lot of the top players go off of Monday and Tuesday, the only difference now is you could actually talk to the players directly. Some teams who can only go through the agents, now they'll talk to the players and try to get them in there. Right, and the Eagles did that, uh, as you mentioned, on Monday. They got in early, and they got a pass rusher in Hassan Reddick, who uh, top five in the league in sacks over the last two years, 23 and a half. Uh, this is a position they surely needed. So uh, let's kind of break this down. Adam, uh, where he lines up, I think a lot of people are wondering, how does he fit John Gannon's system? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be – he's going to line up at strong side linebacker, or they call Sam. Now, don't get that confused with the way they use Jannard Avery. It'll, it'll be different. Uh, it's as early here. We're only in March, so there's a lot we have to learn. And as we know, uh, Gannon did some things we weren't expecting. Some of it we did, and some of it we did that we thought we were going to get we didn't get. Uh, but – Jannard Avery w- did a good job in what they asked him to do. He's, he was known as a pass rusher, and they made him prim- primarily a first and second down run stopper, uh, coverage player a little bit, and it, he did what he could. Um, they were, e- Eagles, I'm told, were happy with what he did, but they were looking for an upgrade. But what they really want is a supreme pass rusher. Talking to Panther sources, Mike, Hassan Reddick is a run-and-chase player. He's not a coverage guy. He doesn't have the instincts to do it. You could try it, but you're probably not going to do well with it. And that's just the way it is. So, you know, in the end, um, they're going to they're gonna have him as a pass rusher. That's why they signed him. You, you know, 31st in, in, in sacks, that's, in, that's really unacceptable. That was unexpected. I know Brandon Graham tore his Achilles last season. That was part of it. But they're going with a young pass rusher who's d- just incredible with pursuit. He's a pure edge rusher. That's all he does. Um, mostly is what he will do for them is, is rush off the edge whether he'll play with his hand down or stand up pass rusher, which he'll mostly do. He's being brought in here, being paid 15 million a year to rush the quarterback. Right. Um, which is obviously something this team has lacked. As you mentioned, they were one of the worst at getting to the quarterback uh, last season. So, um, what does that mean for the draft? What does that mean for that yeah. position? Are they done at defensive end? I mean, is, are we looking at him as a classic defensive end where they don't need to continue to look at that position? Well, I wouldn't see because Gannon runs a scheme they've never ran before in Philly. Um, this, you know, five one, five two. Um, they're a nickel defense, really. They, they only use two linebackers, rarely use three. But the big thing is having that on the ball linebacker, uh, which we saw in training camp, by the way. But the difference between that is you could have an on the ball linebacker that rushes a lot. They didn't do that with Avery and Kerrigan. I, I just to this day, I don't understand it. Uh, but that's going to change here with with Reddick. So. Just think of pass rushers. Who are your pass rushers now for the Eagles team? Reddick, obviously. Uh, Josh Sweat, who signed uh, an extension. Brandon Graham coming off a torn Achilles. That's all they have. So they're not done. They're de- they're definitely not done. Now, I would warn people, for agency does not end tomorrow. It doesn't end next week. It goes through August. Think of it that way. Uh, it Certainly, Eagles have signed players in June in the past on both sides of the football have helped them. You saw when they signed Steven uh, Nelson, who wound up being a starting quarter for them. They, they signed him late. So don't don't like get crazy. I know fans were in action. Where you know what are they doing? Why aren't they signing anyone? Just be patient. You let the market come to you. You don't go to it. That's when you overpay and make mistakes. Rarely do the Eagles go above market. They did Byron Jones. Uh, it wasn't their fault. He wanted to go to Miami. He just wanted to go to South Florida. The Eagles basically gave him the same offer, pretty much that uh, Byron Jones got. But Byron Jones actually saved money because they're they're non. Uh, income tax state, but he wanted to go to South Florida, and that's why he signed there. So I, I wouldn't go crazy uh, about the Eagles not getting a, a, a primetime player. And, and the uh, San Reddick deal, 
it was a market deal. It was not a buff market. It's, it's quite frankly, if he would have waited maybe a day, he might have got more than fifteen million a year. But it's still a good deal, and the Eagles did well there. Um, you say don't you know be patient and um, yeah. you know don't get frantic. Uh, what about the safety game? All right. So let's yeah. take a look at uh, yeah. they didn't get a safety yeah. yet. Um, are there options? And if they don't get one, then what? Yeah. In our reporting. So, look, they they it was either it came down to the Eagles and Ravens for Marcus Williams. And the Ravens just fight, did announce that deal. Uh, the Eagles made a very competitive offer. We're told both offers were very close. It's just that he, for whatever reason, he wanted to play in Baltimore. Now, I would tell you that's that's historically if not the NFL's best defense, it's one of the best top three every year in most categories. They had awful injury uh, injuries in their secondary, but they need to get younger at safety. And now with hit Marcus Williams off the board, and by the way, they were in it um, for Marcus May. Uh, they were one of the finalists for him, but they weren't that close, to be honest with you. He went. To, there's a dominoes. He went to New Orleans. Now, he's coming back from a torn Achilles. The Eagles, my understanding was they – they were not totally comfortable with him coming back, though I'm told Marcus May will be back in, in by by start of training camp. But they wanted someone who was clean medically, more clean. So um, they're they're not. Here's one thing though: Marcus Epps, as of now, will be starting safety. They really like him. It's been a good story of development. But they know they're going to have to add two safeties. They're going to do that. Whether I'd expect them to get one, no, one of them could be resigning. Uh, one of the veterans, whether it's Harris or McLeod. And drafting one. They're not entering training camp with Marcus Epps and, and two other guys not to compete. That's just not going to happen. Uh, but, again, you have till August. You don't, again, doesn't have for a couple months. If they only had one guy through the draft, they'll add, they'll, 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 they'll add, now, again, it could be a guy who's cut. There's so many ways to add players. We can't forget about that. Yeah, and uh, they're going to need to add one there, as you mentioned. Even if they like Epps, uh, that's only one guy. Uh, they lost both yep. their starting yep. safeties from last year. Um, all right, some moves they made yesterday in the restricted free agent. Bolton Scott, Alex Singleton, not tendered. And um, Singleton led them in tackles the last two years. Scott has been an, you know, he's been a contributor. Whenever they've asked him to play, he has stepped up. Um, I would imagine that um, – this kind of shows you what, how they value running back and linebacker. They don't want to pay uh, for that position. Yeah, and they, they didn't want to pay just over, uh, four, you know, o- over two point four million. You can't justify it at, at, as a backup running back. In fact, he only played last year because Sanders got hurt, and then Howard got hurt. The Eagles had the Eagles when everybody was healthy only wanted a two man backfield, plus Hurts. So. Scott often was the odd man out, but when he played, he did a good job. They want Gainwell to be the two anyway. And barring something unforeseen, he should be the two this coming season uh, behind Sanders. So, uh, yeah, Boston Scott, now they haven't closed the door to bring him back, but it would be a significantly reduced deal if he comes back. He, what he ought to do is what we had said last week. We expect him to play somewhere else. We expect him not to get uh, tendered. The only surprise to me, it's a minor surprise, but I did explain that. They really like Greg Ward as a locker room guy, um, quiet leader. Um, de- relatively good hands, but he just gets open. He just gets open repeatedly. But I, what I had said last week was, I don't know why he doesn't sign somewhere else because they don't value him like they should. He he had no role he, here last year. What's that? He had no role last year here. Not until late, until they had to play him because Rager, you know, eventually got benched with his role. He had no role to, late in the season, and Figa White said had no role, and they they were searching. That was a mistake by the coaching staff. Their coaching staff did a very good job last year on offense, but that was one mistake. Because Greg Ward, one thing you could say is he's reliable in a short area, and for the life of me, I don't know why they didn't use him, but he's on what we predicted would be the case if any of them, uh, those guys on offense came back on a reduced deal. I'm talking about skill position players. Um, it's a one-year deal that he agreed to, and it's uh, we, we haven't got the, the numbers yet. We'll have that for a show tomorrow or Sunday but or Monday. But, um, look, he's back, and – uh, I hope they give him a chance. You know, I really do. I hope the staff understands he's valuable. And and obviously they thought he's at least valuable enough to compete for a job. Um, Herbig's interesting because they did um, give him first uh, right to first refusal. I, I'm interested. Jeff and I talked about this yesterday. You know, if I'm like a team like the Giants whose offensive line is a disaster, do I just make the Eagles have to match it or, or lose them? Well, uh, what we reported last week was the Eagles wanted him back. We didn't know at the time how they were going to do it. And 
what they did is they gave him the low tender. Uh, restricted free agents rarely move. In fact, in Eagles history, they've either met, they, they've gotten involved in, in restricted free agency. Remember Mike Bell, um, the Saints had, they actually wound up um, a get, putting a deal together to get him, but it didn't work out very well. Uh, restricted free agents really rarely move. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. Now, he's valuable, um, and I know why the Eagles, uh, when we talked to Eagles first last week, our explanation that we got was um, gets you out of a tough spot, could play center or guard, took his responsibility last year for losing weight. He lost over 40 pounds. He looked much better, never be a good athlete. But he's a great sixth, you know, a, a top backup interior lineman. Now, look, yeah. here's the thing. Mike Isaac Samalo is still on the roster for $5 million. Um, Kelsey's back. Driscoll's back. Herbig's back. Dickerson's back. They've got uh, Jack Anderson. They love as a as a as a potential backup center guard. This is a good position they're in for for their interior line. Yeah, no doubt. Um, they, they've got some depth on the line um, for Philadelphia. Free agency, by the way, has kicked off. It looks like Julio Jones is going to get released by uh, Tennessee. That was a got, brutal move. Just a yeah, brutal. Yeah, got trade. this Baker yeah. Mayfield bizarre story where he basically said goodbye. Who's, we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I would yeah. imagine. Do you, now, Watson has not been traded by this moment, no. right? No, no. Next 48 hours, because he's got some bonus money due by the weekend, so they want right. to get this done quickly. It's got to be happening uh, soon. Yeah, they, they, it, it, it's just a matter of Watson's got to decide where he wants to go because he has a no-trade clause. But they've got the compensation work out. The teams have made their offers, and they just got to firm it up. Again, to be clear, we've told you uh, on Inside the Birds for weeks, the Eagles were not involved. Why? Yeah, they like him, but Watson doesn't want to come to Philly. Right. Um, you know, he gave a list of teams. Barks, unless he changes his mind, there's no there's no story. There. That's why we have we have people have asked us, like, why haven't you talked about it? Because there's not a story. We like, um, there's not been a story for, for several weeks. Overtime, the Eagles are one of two yeah. teams uh, that are pushing for a rule change. Now I'm surprised that there's only like two teams, I guess the three, that that offered a new rule. So it seems that the teams don't care as much about the overtime as the fans do. Well, the teams care because actually, no, the teams do. Some teams do care because it's a fans' league, and Roger Goodell cares about it because he does. He likes watchability. But yeah, why didn't more teams turn it in? So I like Tennessee. So basically, Tennessee's is funny. Yeah, that you got to get for, for, to to end the game on the first drive. Not only do you have to get a touchdown, but you got to get the two point conversion. That's the difference between the Eagles' uh, proposal and in the Colts. Uh, but then the big one, which we knew was coming, because Howie Roseman, their Eagles GM, went on record. He was very upset about it. He did this on the web team website interview, and he did this at the combine when Mosher and I were there. Um, what 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 four teams want, Mike, is they they don't want their executives to be able to leave if they're not going to be GM candidates. If you're a number two executive or number three executive, you're not interviewing for a GM job. You're, they don't want you to be able to interview until June thirtieth, so after June thirtieth, they, they don't want you leaving during draft season, and they don't want your, the secrets to get out. So right. that one may pass. That one may pass. We'll see. We'll see. All right, uh, Adam Kaplan, InsideTheBirds.com and the Inside the Birds podcast. This is a crazy time of year. We'll see. There's still some big names uh, out on the free agent market, so don't be so frustrated. You know, uh, Tyron yeah, Matthau, so. uh, Allen Robinson, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster still out there. So there's some names, uh, among others, many others, um, that are out there. Adam Kaplan, InsideTheBirds.com, here on Football at Four. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. All right, that's Adam Kaplan, Football at Four, here on the Sports Bash.